instead of having a big list of if conditions, the second way to deal with conditional logic is through the use of a choose. The choose tag functionally works like a switch. Within a Java switch, I define cases, and for each case, I specify some value, and of course, there is some default case. When we're dealing with the choose, the way that I define a case is through the use of a sub-tag called when, specifying the Boolean expression for my test. I can have as many when clauses, if you will, as I want. And then, of course, I can specify the default using the otherwise tag. Very basic example here is I have a, uh, a choose. I've got my case one, conditional body, case two, conditional body two, default case, default body. From an execution perspective, this is going to work much more like our traditional if-else structure where the appropriate test is chosen and evaluated, meaning it will be more efficient than many see-ifs blocked on top of each other. Now that we've looked at basic variable management, we've looked at basic flow control, and we've examined conditional output, let's go ahead and revisit our example. This is the same example that we saw in our first sub-lesson, JSP Standard Action JSTL. And let's just go ahead and review the concepts that we have learned. Remember, in order for us to use JSTL within our JSP, the first thing that we need to do is specify the tag library. It just so happens that we are using the core tag library in this case, and we are using the prefix C. Again, following Sun conventions. The second thing that you'll notice is that we are using the useBean tag to perform our object creation. Behind the scenes, it's going to call the no argument constructor, create an instance of the detector, and add it to our request scope. Back to JSTL, you'll see that I go ahead and use one of the variable management tags, the CSET tag, in this case, um, specifying a new value for a property. The operation is going to be invoked on the detector. And remember that the detector right here is the bean that we identified in the, in the JSP use bean tag. Now that we have included the tag library, created our bean, and initialized our bean with an appropriate value for the agent property, we can go ahead and access the bean using JSTL. We just looked at an example of conditional output using the choose semantic. Within this choose, we define three different test cases. The first test case is if the value of the browser property is equal to explorer, we generate conditional text. If the value of the property is equal to Firefox, we generate a different block of conditional text. Otherwise, we'll generate the last default block of conditional text. While this example is not complex, it is a complete example in that it shows you how to use the three primary concepts, JST standard actions, the JSTL core tag library, and the expression language to remove all of the Java logic from our JSP, achieving our primary design goal. Before we conclude this sub-lesson, let's just quickly look at some of the other tags available in the core tag library. There is the import tag. The import tag is a way for me to import content from an external website. It functions very differently than the JSP include tag. The JSP include tag imports content from the same website, in fact, the same web application. Import within the core tag library works more like the curl command found in Unix and Linux variants. The results of that import will be stored in a variable string. 
The second tag that we have listed here is the redirect tag. And the redirect tag performs what I would call a client-side redirect, telling the browser to redirect to a new location. It is no different than me using the response.send redirect method within the HTTP servlet response class. Functionally, they are the same. Syntactically, this tag allows me to remove the Java code necessary to send the client-side redirect. In certain cases, when I build web applications, I may need to define uh, user unique URLs and ensure that those URLs are encoded correctly based on HTTP's requirements. For example, a URL cannot have a space in it. The space needs to be converted into a encoded value. The CURL will allow me to do that, and then I could go ahead and, and use the URL within my, my page. The key thing to recognize here is that it does not actually open the URL, it just formats the URL. And then COUT is a way for me to print out the value of a bean, a property, a header, a cookie, or anything that's available within the expression language. The one thing that you'll notice is that the COUT mechanism has a shorthand notation, and the shorthand notation is simply using the expression syntax, dollar sign, squiggly brace, close squiggly brace, within the context of my HTML, and the JSP container will automatically convert that expression into a CL and print out the value. So that's a quick look at some of the other tags within the core tag library. Now that we have completed the three lessons around the introduction to JSTL, you should be able to list two best practices when it comes to web application design. You should be able to describe the purpose and motivations for JSTL. You should be able to understand where JSTL fits within Java EE and how it's supported in different versions of Java EE, as well as describing the installation process and the configuration process within the JSP. You should be able to identify the five different types of tags and their purposes, as well as structure a JSP to use the core tag library. And last but not least, you should be able to refactor one of those messy JSP files into a nice, elegant, clean design using JSP, Standard Actions, and JSTL. In order for this information to sink in, and now is, it, now is the opportunity for you to perform some hands-on experimentation. There are three different labs that you can use. Uh, the first lab, lab has you refactor a simple for loop using the properties bean into a for loop based on the JSTL for each structure. The second, the second lab has you convert the for loop that uses the header or accesses the header into a for loop that uses JSTL to access the header and generate conditional output. And then the last one is a lab that allows you to refactor an if statement using either just standard JSTL ifs or standard JSTL choose. While you're working on those labs, you may want to refer to additional resources. There are some tutorials and presentations available across those three sites. Uh, within your library, you should be able to find either the core JSTL book or the JSTL in Action book. And if you really want to get into the details, you could look at the JSTL specification found on the JCP website. That concludes our introduction to JSTL lesson.